welcome you all to this new topic which is on a topic which everybody is aware of but uh, not in detail which is bio farming what basically is bio farming or organic farming or many other different names are there like sustainable farming regenerative farming what are these kind of farming methods why they are so much in bust nowadays in the market you will see a lot of products which are uh, raised through bio farming ways so as a bio farmer or as a uh, as a consumer also we must be knowing what are the criteria on which the bio farming or organic farming shall be done what are the exact ways of doing it and what are the things that needs to be avoided so that your product uh, whether it is a animal product or it's a plant based product shall be called as bio farming raised product product so we will discuss one by one these things uh, first of all we will go with the definition you know we we all say that if you ask a layman or a general consumer what is a bio farming based product you will generally get an answer that uh, bio farming basically means growing the plants without chemicals the first thing is is it really possible to grow the plants uh, without chemicals practically it is uh, not possible to grow the plants without chemicals so the thing is that we add the chemicals in a indirect form in the bio farming ways so bio farming ways generally encourages the use of uh, chemicals limited amount of chemicals in a more indirect ways as compared to the non non normal farming methods now you can see on the screen here that soil generally and the crops they suffer with certain kind of uh, basic uh, uh, kind of uh, lacks of certain things like uh, uh, we we use excess amount of fertilizers on the soil the first thing is that right now why fertilizers are used fertilizers basically they provide you know, generally generally they provide nitrogen phosphorus and potassium that's why generally the fertilizers are called as npk now excess amount of fertilizers if you are using it and giving plant the easy way to, way to absorb it generally plant get dependent on these kind of fertilizers and they show a kind of luxury uptake right that becomes a problem for the plant later on because plant becomes weaker and when you stop giving fertilizers to the plant then the plants normally they do not they are not able to sustain themselves then these fertilizers when they go out to the field they damage the soil also and when they damage the soil problems like soil degradation or soil erosion happens sometimes the fertilizers also block the other nutrients also right and that way also it can cause certain kind of uh, uh, lack of nutrients like uh, hypomagnesia is one of the example right second problem is the pest attack which generally the the crops uh, are faced with the pest attack basically uh, different kind of insects or their classes they attack a specific crops right to control them we use we use certain chemicals which is called pesticides to kill these these, these pests right same way uh, there are certain unnecessary plants which are called as weeds they compete with your normal plants and they take space they take they, they take nutrients they take, they, take, they take light more as compared to the normal plants and that is why they are called weeds so weeds also is a problem with the with the, with the growing uh, plant which uh, uh, has to be killed now weeds and pest these two problems has to be uh, tackled in time for them them also we have used certain kind of pesticides or weedicides these pesticides and weedicides they also kind of control these kind of uh, weeds and pests but they indirectly affect the soil and and helps in uh, increasing the soil degradation problem and they also make the plant weaker sometimes the the pest uh, itself or the weeds itself itself they get resistant to these kind of uh, pesticides or weedicides that we use so these are the general problems with the soils and crops as i told you that uh, when you give excess amount of uh, uh, fertilizer to the plant in form of npk it basically uh, curtails or bypasses the natural cycle of, of, of plant growth and it, it, it uh, encourages the luxury uptake easy uptake of nitrogen or other nutrient which is not good for the crop right for for maximum amount of uh, activity in the soil uh, generally in, in a bio farming way it is said that certain kind of bacteria and fungus shall be encouraged more which has a natural uh, relationship natural symbiotic relationship with the with the soil or with the plant 
from the one of the example is the you know, rhizobium leguminosorum we all know this is used for nitrogen fixation one of them is uh, mycorrhizae association of uh, plants with the uh, higher plants with the fungus fungal uh, strains so these kind of relationships indirectly can help in providing uh, nutrients to the plant uh, in a more sufficient or uh, in a more adequate way so these kind of methods are encouraged in the biofarming base right then if you see the soil structure here you will find that there are many levels of the soil you will see that at the lower level here you will find more amount of bacteria fungi algae and protozoans at the medium level you will find nematodes spring tails arthropods and worms and at the larger level you will find bigger uh, insects and worms like earthworms mollusks and large arthropods now earthworms as such you can see it here this is a uh, the presence of earthworms are good uh, in a biofarming way or generally also because they produce humus a dark color uh, organic uh, material which is very healthy for the soil it helps improve the soil condition then certain kind of good bacteria as i told you uh, like nitrogen fixing bacteria certain kind of uh, fungal strains uh, one of the example is uh, trichoderma right these are also uh, found to be good for the soil health so presence of these bacteria and fungus and earthworms sometimes these also gets affected when you use excess amount of chemical onto the soil in form of fertilizer or in form of pesticides this is the basic structure of uh, soil you can see soils still uh, soils have uh, small small pores here these pores are very important not only for uh, water but for movement of nutrients also so for a healthy soil to be uh, called a ideal soil a ideal soil should have 30% of macro pores and 70% percent of small pores that is called micro pore right now if you if you are considering the bio farming topic you will find certain basic definitions which which you must understand at the at the first hand to understand this topic basically we i keep on saying this word called fertilizer fertilizer the definition is any material of natural or synthetic origin which can easily provide nutrient to the plants for the growth basically as i told you npk nitrogen potassium and phosphate are three of the basic uh, nutrients that are that, that are provided by the fertilizers and it is available in the market also by the name npk second uh, thing is that when we as we are saying this fertilizers are bad or direct use of fertilizers are bad in bio farming it affects the, the soils and the plants then what are the alternative ways of using it so the alternative ways of using uh, the fertilizer is this one which is called bio fertilizer right so use of bio fertilizer is encouraged in in uh, bio farming or organic farming ways now what are bio fertilizers basically these are substances which contains living microorganisms living organ microorganisms which when applied to the seeds plant surface or soil they colonize at the root level or rhizosphere level or the interior of the plants and promote the growth uh, or by increasing the supply of available uh, supply or availability of primary nutrients now understand it's like this that any good bacteria or any good fungus if you apply near the uh, root areas like this one right like here if you apply them here you will you will see that it will help in encouraging the growth of the uh, plant or uh, plant also and it will also help in uh, preventing certain kind of diseases also one of the example as i told you is trichoderma is a commercial commercial uh, a fungal strain which is used uh, at the rhizosphere level it not only helps in in in, uh, in multiplying the plant growth but it also helps in uh, preventing certain diseases like nematode attacks it stops and also you know, works as a uh, defense agent for the plant so bio fertilizer is this thing right then one more example of bio fertilizer is bio nitrophos it's a bacterial origin based uh, bio fertilizer bio nitrophos right that is also example as as trichoderma is then we will also use this term called manure now manure again is the indirect way of improving soil and adding nutrients manure we, we all generally know what manure is it's basically the dead uh, the, the waste material of uh, uh, livestock animals livestock uh, which when processed properly it can be used as a method 
to uh, it can be used as a as a manure and it is mixed in the soil so that soil macroporosity uh, soil uh, buffering uh, ability and the uh, availability of nutrients are made more easier by applying manure now here the point is to understand that uh, not only animal feces animal uh, waste material but plant man material sometimes also can be used as manure when plants and their dead materials are used as manures they are called as green manures so understand this term that there are two kind of manures one is based on animal feces and one is based on green manure based right uh, plant based uh, uh, manures so we will discuss these these ones also when once the lecture we will proceed further then there is a term called pesticides as i told you that the certain kind of chemicals which are used to to kill the the attacking insects or uh, attacking a certain kind of uh, bacteria so a certain kind of insects if they are attacking it how to uh, incapacitate uh, incapacitate them or how to kill them or how to control them uh, these things can be done by the pesticides right so now here also if you if you if you are saying that pesticide use is bad or it is not good for the crop or the soil then what are the alternative way, alternative ways of using the pesticide so there are certain kind of uh, biological uh, origin chemicals which can be used to control the pest which are called as bio pesticides right they are called as bio pesticides so bio pesticides bio fertilizer manure these are the basic things which you will keep on uh, hearing in this lecture and these will if, if the basic understanding of these things are clear you will be able to understand the concept of biofarming in a more appropriate way um, as, far, as far as the fertilizers are concerned as i told you there are three basic kinds of fertilizers nitrogen based fertilizers phosphate based fertilizers and potassium based fertilizers depending upon the plant growth and the disease symptoms they show you can use different kind of fertilizers like potassium based fertilizers they are used when the yellowing or browning of the edge of the leaves right yellowing or browning of the edge of the leaves if it is if the symptoms is visible you can use potassium based fertilizer same way when stunted growth you can find right then you can use potassium based uh, phosphate based fertilizers and when uh, nitrogen based fertilizers generally are uh, used at the middle stage of the plant life so based upon what is your requirement you can use different ratios of these kind of fertilizers uh, when i say different kind of ratios you can see it here in this photograph also that if if in a fertilizer bag it is written 10 5, uh, 10 is to 5 is to 10 that means it has 10 percent nitrogen 5 percent phosphate and 10 percent potassium uh, rest of them is uh, ca carrier product right so if if i say that my plant is showing uh, the leaves are showing yellowing or browning at the edge that means potassium is less so we will use a fertilizer which has higher uh, which has a higher presence of potassium into it so whenever next time you go to a, a, a nursery uh, for purchasing the the fertilizers always check your plants first what kind of symptoms these uh, fertilizers are you now these these uh, plants are showing based upon that you can take your fertilizer now bio fertilizer as i told you that bio fertilizers are uh, substances which contains living microorganisms and not only they provide easy nutrient to the plant but they improve soil texture yield of the plant and they work as a defense system also to not allow the pathogens attack they are uh, they are not dangerous as chemicals are they are very eco friendly and they are easy easy to be available they have uh, they they are cost effective also and uh, this they kind of sometimes control certain harmful substances or insects also like nematodes they control and they are effective very effective in the semi arid and hot conditions also right so uh, you can see it here the examples bacterial examples of of uh, of uh, using bio fertilizers are azospirillium based ones symbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria cyanobacteria ones then uh, free living nitrogen fixing bacteria ones like clostridium and fungal based one is this one which is called trichoderma which is a general for bio fertilizer which is used to improve uh, plants vigor uh, defense against plant diseases and they sometimes also work as a biotic elicitor that means they can be applied near the root spaces here and they will help in in uh, kind of regenerating the plant to increase 
to 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 make uh, more amount of secondary metabolites into the plants also and then you can see also here that they they recognize certain kind of uh, uh, certain kind of pathogens and they attack them and control them also now as i told you that there are certain kind of uh, uh, pesticides which are used uh, in in general ways of growing the plants one of them is called organochlorines organophosphates and carbamates are three basic classes of uh, pesticides which we are used which are of chemical nature and sometimes they are very very dangerous also some of the uh, chemical based pesticides are completely banned in certain countries such as ggt it's, it is completely banned nowadays it is used in some countries to control mosquito right then organophosphates and organo uh, carbamates are also uh, have some kind of advantages but generally they are also having certain kind of uh, side effects also one of the class which is which can be considered in bio farming ways is pyrethroids basically pyrethroids are uh, the source of pyrethroids earlier was a plant called uh, pyrethrum cinerary folium you can see it here this kind of uh, pyrethroid they, they can easily be generated generated from this this plant the aerial part of the plant and can be used as a uh, as a uh, chemical to control the pest the thing was that this pyrethroid had a light sensitivity and it was unstable in the light but nowadays in the lab laboratory conditions these pyrethroids can be made they are more effective in in, in use and they have uh, less chances of affecting the plant negatively uh, as well as the soil negatively right so these pyrethroids can be considered in the category of pesticides which can be used in the biofarming Then biopesticides, we are discussing that there are certain kind of animal plants or bacteria and certain minerals which can be used to control pests. One of them is uh, one of them is this pheromone. Pheromone. Now pheromones are certain hormones, sex hormones of insects. They can be isolated from the insects and they can be put on the field at different different positions because pheromones they they are smelly. Uh, they can generate smell. Uh, other insects can get uh, attracted towards it specific other insects can uh, get attracted towards it and they can easily be caught and controlled this way the fero uh, insect sex hormones like pheromones are used in study not only to to trap insects but to monitor them also so sex hormones uh, pheromone and scented plant extract scented certain plants which have uh, uh, smells they can also be uh, made in extract form and then they can also be used to attract pests and uh, this way they can be used to control the uh, amount of uh, attack of the pest as well as count them in time also monitor them in time also right there are certain microbial pesticide also which can be used one of them is bacillus thuringiensis you must have heard this name in your uh, in your in your gmo classes or uh, transgenic classes that basically bacillus thuringiensis produces a crystal protein which if if taken by the insects it goes into their their uh, gastrointestinal uh, tract and the crystal protein expresses there and it can kill, easily kill the insect so this bacillus thuringiensis powder can also be used as a microbial pesticide same way this bt gene can be cut and expressed into the plants that that is a different different topic but that can also be used this way this way it can also be used this approach will be called as plant incorporated protectants pips approach in which transgenic bt gene can be expressed and the uh, uh, the pest attack can be controlled certain pest attack can be controlled uh, by this way not all the insects can be controlled by uh, by the uh, this pips approach now after discussing about bio farming this basic of bio fertilizer bio farming uh, bio pesticides now it is important to address the basic problem what are the general problems associated and what are the general conclusions associated with bio farming right so basically as i, as, as I think there are certain ma major issues with the bio farming which generally people feel is that that one of them is uh, nomenclature issue there are different names of this this uh, technique right different countries at least 16 different names are there as i told you in the beginning uh, regenerative farming organic farming certain kind of differences are there but 
generally if you are considering the bio farming or organic farming ways the nomenclature is a issue here right and then there are misconception issues also and conceptual understanding issues also now as as i told you in the beginning people say that bio farming is is basically a a farming method in which uh, there is no chemical involved which is not true we, we cannot use uh, we cannot uh, expect the plants to grow without chemicals you can use the, the chemicals in form of agrochemicals or plant plant based method but or or uh, general chemicals also but it is not true that bio farming is without chemicals so but we can we can generate one more definition of bio farming in which it says that it avoids the direct use of readily soluble chemicals and biocides if you are writing this definition or understanding this, this definition that means you are going on the correct path the bio farming ways basically avoids the direct use of readily soluble chemicals indirectly in form of a bio fertilizer in for indirectly in form of manure form if you are providing nutrients to the plants the chemicals to the plants that comes in the category of the bio farming then bio farming encourages the use of chemicals of natural origin right so whenever you are uh, making anybody understand about the definition of bio farming understand these two points and then uh, make them understand second misconception is that organic farming uh, involves substituting organic inputs with so called agrochemicals now if you are providing um, a manure or a bio fertilizer into the crop do not think that you can use this chemical agrochemical in any extent of uh, in in a, in, in a unlimited form substitution of npk uh, as a mineral fertilizer by npk into organic uh, as a organic manure could have drastic negative effects on the growth, growth of the crops so first you need to understand the the pattern of growing of the crops then only you can apply the organic manure because misuse of organic material either by access of inappropriate uh, cycles or a mixture of uh, uh, both can curtail the natural cycle of the plant that, that means it can disturb the natural uh, cycle of the plants and it will uh, indirectly affect the growth of the plants right then uh, it, it's a, it's a, it's a fact that uh, organic ways of growing the crops are not as uh, productive as compared to the normal plants that we grow through chemicals right so this this misunderstanding that when when we use organic farming ways it will immediately start giving us a, it will start giving us more of yield of the plants or fruits or crops it is not true right so basically uh, this is slow process the product products which are generated by organic farming uh, methods uh, the products are not very really attractive they are not very well polished they will have blemishes on the on the on the product also but uh, still bio farming or bio farming based product if raised properly they have more nutrients and they are more stable as compared to the uh, normal commercial uh, crops that are grown through the uh, chemical farming right you can see it here uh, organic farming and uh, intensive farming uh, there are comparisons are made you can see that uh, organic farming they are more expensive right they have more blemishes on the crops and then uh, the yield is poor and the intensive farming as i told you that uh, because of use of excess amount of chemicals these chemicals go into the soil it it, it creates a kind of uh, soil degradation problem in, in in soil then animals which are living nearby in the nearby area they also get affected by these chemicals natural predators which are there in the, in the in the soil right which can uh, sometimes help the soil and the plants to 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 be saved from the pest they also uh, run away when excess amount of chemicals are used in in the in the soil or in the on the plants right so these intensive farming ways which are which are discussed here they have this kind of side effects and side effects are or disadvantages then the disadvantages of organic farming are also mentioned here one is that it is more uh, expensive second that yield is very poor and third is the product is not very very attractive it has certain kind of blemishes also right
Now, when I say that organic farming methods have uh, yield problems and more blemishes on the crop, and it is more, very complicated, but still people are using it because of certain uh, good points. Uh, the organic farming basically it overcomes the major questions from the current farming system that it encourages the use of ecological balance and it, it also focuses on the biological process to be optimum right soil should be healthy without chemicals and there should be a, a balance between the ecology as well ecology between the plant and the crop uh, plant and the soil in which it is, which is being grown you will always find that the organic uh, farming based methods the products are, are always having high dry matter and higher vitamin content and they are pesticide free when, when i say pesticide free that means there is no use of chemicals which indirectly means that soil structure is healthy presence of certain kind of good insects are always there like earthworms microorganisms and larger insects which which shall be encouraged in these kind of soils so when you are using a pesticide free approach or fertilizer free approach then you are encouraging these kind of earthworms and microorganisms and large insects which indirectly is making your soil in a much more improved condition right then it also uh, this kind of uh, organic based methods they also improve the storage quality also of the product now um, there is an international organization international federation which is called as international federation of organic agricultural movement it is a which is affiliated affiliated in more than 120 countries right this basically is a, is a federation which decides the how how the uh, organic farming uh, based methods should should be done what are the basic criteria under which this kind of cropping shall be done and they decide as, as a regulatory body that whether a product is organic uh, organic based product or not now it has uh, this ifoam uh, the international federation of organic agricultural movement it has regional bodies international bodies national bodies and sector platforms also right now um, the basic aim of uh, aims and objectives of ifoam is same as i, as I told you that there should, shall be no uh, use of uh, pesticides chemicals in, if you are using it in the livestock industry, there should shall be no use of uh, uh, hormones, antibiotics, which is generally used to grow the, the animals, right? So no use of chemicals uh, in form of hormones and antibiotics shall, shall be there. There should be encouragement of uh, biological cycles. There should be a, a, a improved use uh, of renewable resources. Then uh, there should be a... Uh, 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 they, they should provide a uh, provide livestock uh, with conditions of life that allow them to perform their innate behavior right so providing any if you are talking about organic farming in animals also uh, like chicken the poultry industry or livestock industry then these kind of uh, animals sh shall be allowed to perform their innate behavior that means they should not be caged there should be no use of chemicals in, in, in form of hormones and antibiotics on them this is basically the outcome of uh, ifom is also right this is the basic outcome of this ifom also that it, it uh, encourages the composting procedures manure use of uh, use of manures composting procedure use of green manures crop rotation or wide rotation that means growing of different kind of crops in a certain area not uh, discouraging the monoculture approach growing one kind of crop but increasing uh, uh, the use of more uh, different kind of crops into a certain area and right? that is called wide rotation right then complete avoidance of soluble fertilizers that is that we have already discussed then there should be prohibition of intensive livestock operation antibiotics and hormones shall shall, shall, shall be completely avoided if you are using a uh, organic approach then to control weeds as i told you uh, there are certain kind of weed sites which are used that shall be banned that shall be avoided and there are other ways of controlling weeds such as mechanical ways or thermal based ways uh, to control weeds that are also avoided in ifom based method then uh, so after the discussion of all uh, the aspects of biofarming we come to a conclusion that organic farming or biofarming uh, if I talk about the definition of it, 
it basically avoids the direct use of chemicals in form of any growth hormone any antibiotic any growth regulator any livestock feed feed additive any synthetically compound fertilizers pesticides if you are avoiding all these things and growing your crop by using indirect way of increasing the uh, the, the nutrient in form of organic manure maybe green manure or a farmyard manure or you are using bio fertilizers or uh, bio pesticides to control pests right if you are following these guidelines and growing your crop then you are a bio farmer right then uh, as far as definition is concerned it is, it is there on your screen also organic farming is a production system in which which avoids or largely excludes the use of synthetically compounds fertilizers pesticides growth regulators you can include antibiotics here also and livestock feed additives right so this is basically the basic concept of uh, bio farming now in the next lecture you will come to one by one how what are the green manures what are organic manures how they can be used what is composting methods which can effectively be used in the bio farming ways thank you so much for attending this lecture